darkest yeah. things that people go through in their lives and suffer and yeah. and stuff. There's so many variables, isn't so it? So many. It's just like I think even for me personally, it's like in only in the last few years am I recognizing some of the traumas that I've experienced. Mm. And it's just like the the very sick thing about traumas is that you know what? okay, I'm gonna say one thing and then go back to it. Killer killer podcast. KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. All righty. Set it up to knock it down. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Cat, a podcast live and direct, central London, essential as you need to be. I'm just making a point there, we're using iPhone 13 right now. I'm not sponsored by them, but it's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out to everybody that's got the television app. Hold tight, graffitikings.co.uk inside the place. We have an old friend. I say old because uh, I've met her a long time ago, and she's about to remind me when. I've just been a fan of her music for a <laughs> Good while now. Hold tight. So and nice. be inside Yay. the place. <laughs> thank you for having me. How are you, my dear? I'm all good. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm good, all right. Good, good. I just noticed the tattoo on your hand and I like that. Talking about the so for those who ain't watching and uh, are listening, it's a heart shaped t- tattoo. What, what's That's your theory? So nice. Um, are you a tattoo fan? I have a few. So I've also got like a heart tattoo oh, here. Come on. And on then the wrist. I've got like, oh, oh to yo, show you. Hold yo. on. Let's see. Yo, this is like the I've manga comic my... of arms here. <laughs> <laughs> just a few. Uh, my Afro Cone uh, sister. Uh, up the arm there. I've got my Trinity of Ooh, Afro Sisters against the, the back Sun of the there. Arm. I've got my inner child on a throne. Oh, now Some that's things. sick. That's on the other side of the arm. So yeah. your whole arm has got like a whole 360 thing going on. And it's going to have some more. You yeah. tell me the story behind this. <laughs> you really want the story of this? So uh, the girlfriend I was with at the time, yeah. uh, Patsy Kensit, we have the same tattoos. Patsy Kensit? Is yeah. that as in the television? What's, remind me who Patsy Kensit is because that sounds like a famous name that I'm trying to remember. Yeah, the girlfriend, uh, she, uh, what was she, Lethal Weapon. And Emma yes. Daniel. And that, you know. <laughs> okay. We were really drunk at one stage or another. And we were like, yeah. yo, let's get a tattoo of scene like, there and then. Yeah. So she literally, someone just came around with a tattoo and, grrr, grrr, and that's all Amazing. I remember. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love those tattoo stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think incredible. every tattoo needs to have a story. Like. Yeah. I think also it's like, it's good if it's just a memory of a time. Because that sounds like mm. a, a fun night. And that is like, you can always look at the, back at that and be taken straight back to that time however long ago it was 100 yeah do you feel like i think people have that with music as well For sure it's a an emotional yeah. thing isn't it yeah i think if you've got like well um i was even talking to my friend about it like what, a few days ago you can all you can only listen to or like have that experience of hearing a song for the first time once so there's that experience of like when you're first blown away by a song you're like what is this mm-hmm. and you only get it once mm-hmm. but then it's also nice to give that to other people when you show it to them you know that i know you so i know you're gonna love this song but also it's like you remember if something was happening i don't know your first kiss or something like mm-hmm. that and you're like i made this playlist <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you know what i mean it's, it's just like we kissed when this song came on i don't know do you know what i mean so you have mm-hmm. those kind of like really strong emotions and memories yeah. attached to music which is good and also i think it's the type of it's it's the so when I was younger, yeah. it used to be mixtapes. And some of the biggest tunes I heard were like Funkmaster Flex or Ron G. Yeah. And it's the way they cut it up into a thing. And before you know it, it's just like, you don't remember that. You don't know the name of that song? Yeah. It was this, this, <laughs> you know? That's so crazy that you said that. The, the My favorite song on the planet, like the song that makes me make music, is a song called Climb the Mountain by Kenny, Kenny Lattimore. Mm-hmm. Now, my dad used to play that on a mixtape. So one of my um, uncles, well, we call, we call everyone in Nigerian culture, anyone that's older than you, that's your mum's your mom's friend, it ends up being your uncle. But he's not really my uncle, but like my uncle yeah, is a DJ. I know <laughs> Do you I know yeah. He's a DJ and he used to make mixtapes and he used to travel between London and America to go and get like whatever the hottest tracks were and stuff like that. So we had this one mixtape. And just like you said, like you hear this amazing song, but you have no clue who it's by. One, also when people are mixing, they're speeding it up or slowing it down. So I remember in the mixtape, I used to listen to this one song over and over again, like, what is this? And it was sped up and I didn't realize. So I thought for for years, it's actually 10 years. I thought it was a tempo. And because it pitches up a little bit, I thought it was a woman, but because it's like the voice is slightly higher and it's playing faster, right? So like for so many years, I was like, oh my God, there's this beautiful song. I was listening to to this song as a six-year-old six or seven year old 
10 years later, because I'd been singing it to all my friends, particular sing, particularly singing it to my best friend, and I knew the words. Like, I held on to the lyrics for that long. My best friend brought it to me on a burn CD when we were, like, Ooh. 16. And, like, I didn't know that. I only knew the lyrics, didn't know who sang it, what the title was. And, like, that was the first time also I'd heard the song the whole way through. And it was just, like, 10 years later after being obsessed with this yeah. song. Because I lost it. I lost the mixtape when I was, like, 11. Then it was, like, 16, 17, my I best friend brings God. it. Yeah. It's insane. Like, that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, when you were talking about songs meaning something to yeah. you, that song, it's not even the best song on the planet. It's no, no, beautiful. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, like, the it was a song I heard as a kid that was just, like, I want to make music because I've heard this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. The amount of... I oh, I can probably count maybe three songs like that on one hand yeah. where I'll be damned if I can find it where it is. Yeah. In the ether of, you know what I mean? It's exactly. not like you can Shazam that shit. Exactly. <laughs> like, but they really are, they're so, inf- it, it, no more than a minute and a half, but they're so informative for just yeah. shaping your whole. Exactly. Because you have that feeling, isn't it? Yeah. It is that thing. It's like you hear something, you're like, that's exactly how I wanted a song to be mm. in like, or that song, that's exactly how it should have been. Mm. And that person might not even have known it. They might not even have had like a life off of it. Do you know mm. what I mean? Because there's so much music that happens mm. and there's so much music that like ends up on a mixtape or like with somebody's demo that gets put in a mix and stuff like that, that for them, not enough people heard it. So it didn't do what it needed to yeah. do for them. But like for you, you heard that and you're like, Down, now that's why I'm going to rap like that. That's why I'm that. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I do. It's and crazy. now you come to mention it, I see it. Because like, you, I hope you don't mind me saying Go this, on. but I think stylistically, yeah. your your sound, and trust me, I've listened enough, <laughs> renaissance. Yeah. There's a level of renaissance. Like I, I like feel that. like with your songs, they they take me back to certain times, like yeah. 92 Jodeci. I love that. Wow. Do yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Few moments where I'm just like, yo, that is exactly like what, what was there? was another band. I'd be there if I forget the name. What era? Now. But now. then they go back as well. Um, and there's it's only a few people that can really Children of Zeus, maybe? No, no, they're American. Now, American. Yeah, duo. Girls. Two boys. Two boys. Um, yeah, black guys. And they are... Um, it's one word. It's like a him. It's just him or... Th- they, 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 they. Oh yeah. They. Well, okay. Ooh, well, That's I amazing. I like those music. They're yeah. so sick. So 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 sick. And it reminds me, you 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 fall right in the pocket uh, that in line with what that trend is. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Thank you. That's all right. That's all right. I got more. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but I I would imagine that these informative years shaped a lot of massively. Like saying, you know what I mean? Massively. Like, well, I think what I've been. What I found over the years as well is the pe- or are the people the or is the people that I've been like drawn to kind of do similar things to like I always find myself as someone who's brand new right now but is somehow in their music capturing the essence of like a moment in the eighties and the nineties and like tr- somehow it's like I'm, my my not my music is always an ode to my influences because like. I'm a music lover first, more than anything. When I started making music, I wanted to DJ, then I wanted to dance. It was like a mixture of those things at the same time. I just wanted to collect music and I wanted to dance to it. Then I was just like, I'm obs- I'm so obsessed with music. I want to make it. And it's like, it would be untrue of me to say that my music isn't just an amalgamation of everything that I've heard. Because like... I just knew as a young person, I just knew one, I know more music than any of my friends. Do you know what I mean? And that, yeah. that was my thing was just like, can I play you music? Mm. Play, listen to this, 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 this. And that was like, my obsession was just like, actually playing music and having lots of music. So then when it comes to making music now, as much as like, a lot of artists want to say that like, it's it comes as a form of expression of themselves and the way that they can truly like, communicate themselves to yeah. the world. Like, no, I think I'm a bit more like, I want to take what I've learned from like listening and like what I've, what or how I've interpreted what I've heard mm. because so many years later I can I can listen to something and be like oh that was supposed to be my version of like a Missy fusion with like Erica or something like that but I listen back and I be like I wasn't listening to that song properly mm. and that's why that sounded like that mm. but it made something it yeah. something unique because that was what I thought that music sounded like now that's interesting you know some of the and, and the techniques as well in which some people created the songs in the first place yeah they're different but when you take hold of them after hearing them and you reinterpret in in your way yeah 
that's crazy because technology is moving so forward and you exactly. what may have taken them ages to kind of harvest and cultivate this sound. Yeah. Which is like, deep. press the button. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's a, it's a good and a bad thing yeah. because I think there is like, there's still something really magical about like going through a whole process to create mm. something. I think like music is the one art that's kind of, and I don't want to like sound like, um, a purist, but I am to a degree, but like... Talk that shit, it's your podcast. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, in other art forms, you really value how much time and effort has gone into the art. Do you know what I mean? So if someone is making a sculpture, like an artist is allowed to take a year to make one sculpture yeah, and then they yeah, whack yeah. Pew, four million pounds on that and you're like, whoa, and it goes up in a gallery and yeah. people go and walk around and look at it for 10 years, one thing that that person made. Whereas with music, it's like the faster you can make it now, it's the more valuable. It's just like the, the the less it can like the less it even comes from something, and the quicker you can churn it out, and the more you can make, then like the more value there is to it. Because you just blow my mind. It's true. Think about it. in every other art form, like. Um, just give me another one Everything else They want you to get Ballet mm. Like you can't just go On your first day And they're going to make you The most fa- famous ballet dancer You can't mm. They want you to have Like broken your ankles And your toes to look like that Do you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. You take your yeah. shoes off And it's like black and green Because yeah, yeah, you stood yeah. on You stood on your toes Like this yeah, yeah, for yeah, 10 yeah. years yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can do a backflip And then hold someone in the air and both of you spin and blah blah yeah, blah they want <laughs> do you know what i mean they want you to have done that like not to say that you have to in music have gone through because there's also like i also i'm a fan of nepotism so i'm also like it someone nep- should nepotism? nepotism is like when you get help so let's say your dad is the ceo of whatever company so of course you're going to get a job in that place yeah. or like you just yeah people just help you along because those building blocks are already there mm. for you. Like I want to, I want my kids to experience that because I'm not a person who's just like the only way you deserve to have anything it's is to have got. Do you know what I mean? You don't have to have gone through the mud and like yeah. broken your back. Mm. No, it's just like I want that. I've set this foundation so then I can say, hey kids, this is how you use studio equipment. Go off and be brilliant. You know, you don't have to uh, figure yeah. this stuff out and hustle and be in the back of the club trying to like meet people. Here's this person, here's that person, mm-hmm. and go off and do what you want to do. Progress, right? That's yeah, progress. exactly. That's what we're all aiming for. You yeah. know. Yeah, we're not. Uh, it's not leg ups. It's it's opportunities and progress. Yeah, exactly. Just going back to your um, uh, the 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 theory of music versus like vintage, authentic, cl- classic, contemporary art. Yeah. Um. Because I've experienced this recently, and I, you know, you can go down a rabbit hole of, oh, does this sound right? Did, you know, are the, you know, are the stars aligned with the moons, and are we, you know? <laughs> but no, people just play the first eight seconds, and even they like the yeah. thing, and they don't. Yeah. And one comparison I think it does hold true to, which we're moving forward to in in our lifetimes, mm-hmm. is the tokenization of things and how yeah. throw a thou- 10,000 tokens out and see what sticks, sticks right? NFTs and shit like that. Like this seems to be yeah. like a real thing. And yeah. I think music's been doing that forever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I think it's because it's not a business. Well, music is like, it's not just about the art. It is also about entertainment. And like when we look at ourselves as humans right now, we are so um sorry, you know it's me looking at that. I was also looking at cause it's still recording. I don't know if it's enough to know. No, no, no. But- <laughs> we good. She's fearing, she's worried. No. She's, she's she's seeing me see and thinking, oh god, what's he seeing? <laughs> you go and girl, you can um, it's just that new camera that's completely doing my swede. But carry on. <laughs> we're gonna get we're gonna get through this. Gonna get through this. That's what's um we're so uh, over stimulated and we're so overexposed to things that like we are, our attention is so short mm. and like that's a I again I think there's good and bad to every to everything so I think the good thing about us like I don't know needing a new needing a hit of dopamine really mm. quickly all of the time is that like I don't have to be perfect all the time when I put something out. That's the one thing I can see. Actually, I can spin it on its head and be like, actually, I can just keep putting things out yeah. there yeah. instead of spending ten years trying to make the perfect album or something like that. Knowing that no mm. one is going to listen to it for more than eight mm-hmm. seconds before they decide whether they're going to continue listening or skipping. I'm like, actually, no. Every like 
small idea that I have unpolished unfinished mm-hmm. just raw like it was just in a moment it was just us in the bathroom like freestyling and we just recorded it and we put it out there it's just like all of those things suddenly now have a chance because yeah. it's like they have a chance to be heard because someone will just be randomly scrolling and they will consume that because we're consuming so much and like people are distracting themselves so much with like entertainment i'm not gonna yeah. say music it's like music falls into entertainment a little bit more now they're distracting themselves with that so by chance somebody or everybody somewhere can stumble across something that i made in no time at all just because of this like perpetual scrolling that we're doing mm. so i'm just like actually that's giving it's giving all of us more opportunity to be heard because more people are just consuming at a higher rate and I don't have to focus too much on like spending too much time, energy, resources, making the perfect thing, you know? And it just flattens it everything. It, it, it neutralizes everything so that it's all one thing and it's just work. Yeah, and yeah. Really, and that adds a level of forgiveness, doesn't it? Yeah, like exactly. It is that because I think what was happening and, I, and let's say there's a the uh, um, crossover time between like different generations i'm a millennial and then there's gen z that are like they're in their 20s now Mm. or something like that and it's like i'm in that space where i would i was one of the people saying music is so rubbish now because it's really like everything is just copy and paste and people are just like stealing each other's ideas from youtube and everyone's learned how to make Mm. music like purely on the laptop without having any like hardware and having any real like I don't know, in studio experience, mm. do you know what I mean? But like I just lost my chain of thought there for a second. I'm gonna uh But you're embracing it now? Yeah, yes, exactly that. So it's like there is this real you were talking about forgiveness. Yes, exactly that. Is that because I came from an era where I'm watching Michael Jackson's on mm. TV still alive. We have to think mm-hmm. about that too, because Gen Z, like, they're watching a lot of the greats, but like as archive videos Throwback, yeah. do you know what I mean I was like watching music video yeah. awards yeah, yeah, yeah. ceremony uh, on TV being like oh my god he's just done a backflip into the dance routine mm. into this and whatever and watching and being a dancer you just must have lost on oh, you see what I mean yeah. and I'm watching that in real time and knowing that like all the artists around me that I'm seeing are having that as a standard to attain to and like obviously Beyonce I think is more is in my era of people who's just like they've come up watching that and seeing that and everyone had to be great to be mm. in that space to okay anyone now you're competing with everybody so it's just like like Beyonce is that kind of crossover generate crossing over to this mm. new generation mm. and it's like that thing about now there's a bit more forgiveness because you don't have to be like Michael Jackson level to be to be seen because you yeah. really don't like yeah. if we're just seeing like someone on a street corner like playing the saxophone and racking up 40 million views in like do you know what I mean True, yeah and, in, and it's in good a, yeah and that's fantastic and then also we're seeing someone do play cups or doing it as a joke and also getting that same amount of numbers mm. that wasn't happening before before it was like you could only get 40 million if you were Michael Jackson level do you know what I mean so it's just mm. like there is no more perfection there's no more need for perfection yeah. obviously the cream of the crop is always going to rise to the top that's a very real thing mm. so I think you're always going to have who would that be now? Who are our superstars now? I don't know, like a Doja Cat is someone yeah, who's yeah, talked about yeah. quite a bit because she can do it all. She can sing, dance, Yeah, act, I like that. Right, like, yeah. You like to feel like you, you, that you're investing in someone that has a versatility, but actually it's a little bit more chilled for these reasons. Yes, exactly that. If she wants to turn on the engine, yeah, she'll go. exactly that. Yeah. But then she can also just be fun going on Instagram Live with a wig on and be yeah. silly. And so it's, I like Nicki Minaj. I yeah. feel like she does that too. Yeah, she really plays down shit, but but actually, she's a beast. She's a fucking. Do you beast. see what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. In a war, like you're finished. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's that. Um, Michael Jackson in 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 this, like you say, the millennial generation of um, artists, like, ah, uh, yeah, I guess you had Usher, but yeah. Neo for me, yeah, he had the songs as well. like he yeah. had hooks. Like, yeah, Usher didn't really have. He never really has had hooks. Yeah. He's not had chorus. I never thought he had like a chor- chorus that I can remember, remember. I feel you. You know, it's so interesting you say that because I feel like everyone has, um, you know, you have selective memory of a time. Mm. So I think when we're talking and we're looking back on those things, like I've never really resonated enough with Neo's music. Mm. Uh, uh, so I just wouldn't yeah. be able to tell you a hook. But I'm so sure there's other people who will be like, no, Neo was the hook king. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, I couldn't argue for Neo true, at all. Man. And again, it does all apply back to what we were saying about how you discover a thing. Yeah. And what song of that person's resonates the most. Yeah. So that still does 
apply. Cream does rise to the top. 100%. And you do find your audience. Yeah. How did you find your audience? Putting out music, you know what? It's like, like I said before, when you do a particular kind of thing or you're drawn to um, a particular kind of style, you also are just attracted to people who are doing something in that kind of same vein. Mm -hmm. So I think, because I ended up collaborating so much with so many different artists right at the beginning when I was like, even my space days, I was like collaborating with kids in school. So I was just always like, let me actually find people who are on the same wave as me and we make music together. Then when it came to like uni times, um, I started making music with uh, Alpha Mist, who's like jazz. Are you familiar with Alpha Mist? I'm reasonably familiar, yeah. So he's like jazz pianist, composer and producer. And then like on the other spectrum of thing away from jazz, I was also doing a lot of R&B stuff. So I was working and still am working with um, producers called Rom Defoe and mm -hmm. I Am Nobody. And it's like when... My whole thing and my journey, again, is always like I can only give credit to the people that have helped me along the way because it was like I f ended up finding my audience by putting myself in all of the right places and other people's little bubbles. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like right now, actually, I find myself in a really interesting space trying to figure out. It's like, OK, I feel like I'm talking about so many different things at the same time. Get in. But <laughs> Get in. But I'm like right now, I'm like I have to spend more time now figuring out exactly what the person that listens to my music wants because so many people and I can never tell and I don't even know what your entry point is to my music I don't know what point people came to discover my music that's so interesting I couldn't tell you most people can because they have one hit record and then like a million people came then before then they didn't have any listeners after then like there's the people who stayed right it's just I've had this wave of thing happening for like 10 years where it's just like there's a few songs there's a few moments, there's like an EP that would that have brought maybe the same amount of listeners, mm. but like within a year or two gap. So it's just like some people said to me, I've been listening to you since 2013 when I put out an EP called Love Hater. And when those people when people say that to me, I'm like, what? Like, mm. how did you find me? And I'm just like, I'm almost like creeped out because I'm like, you've been watching me for 10 years. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. But yeah, 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 it's yeah. like that that for me is like okay that is um, not impossible but that would have been almost impossible to find so it's just like then those people would understand where i am now because i was really just doing everything like i was just making it up as i was going along at that point mm. and it went only on Bandcamp, and there was like one or two songs so on my soundcloud hardcore devotees. Yeah. like you couldn't have found that and i very 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 rarely post it and posted it at the time as well wow. so it was just like when people when i meet people today 10 years later and they've been listening since then i'm like how did you even find me then how did that even come about right but mm. but yeah it's like there's also um yeah all the collaborators the thing that I did too is that as obviously I produce music as well but I think there's also a big no I know there's also a really big chunk of the people that listen to my music that don't even know that that just think of me as the singer on an Alpha Miss song mm -hmm. or on a Rom Defoe song or on an I'm Nobody song or who, who well, I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've worked with so many producers do you just think of me as a singer on that person's song so it's like yeah, it, sometimes I'll I'll meet someone, I'll be like, oh, and I'll mention one of my songs and I'll have no clue what that is. And I'll be like, and I produced that. And it will be like, you produce? And I'm mm. like, so I don't know, like, who knows what about me and stuff like that. You're sculpting a visual manic, a man, yeah, a mannequin avatar in your head yeah. of the ultimate uh, male, female that check your stuff yeah. from the boots down to the hat. Yeah from the class to the eye colour to yeah. the kind of rings and where they go and buy them yeah. to the kind of toothpaste they have. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Where they go and drink. Yeah. Where they go party. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's the last thing someone thinks about when they're charmed by a song, but it's taken you as many 10,000 hours mm -hmm. to find you to them. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a real... That's that's romantic, man. That's a nice word. Because you're trying to find <laughs> your soulmates. Yeah, that's for sure. So you're creating this avatar of the ultimate people yeah. that is your tribe and you're going through these courses. Yeah. And then when they find you, the reception is like, oh, where you been? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> exactly. so cold. <laughs> that's exactly it. They just don't know that you're looking for them. Yeah. 
That That's is it. the sickest shit. I Gosh. love that. I like that. I like how you put that because I think there's also, like, to contrast that, there's also the machine that is just, like, has this way of putting you in front of everybody if you have the opportunity to like i don't know be signed to a major or or, or work with and i'm doing this like they're yeah, over yeah. there like they're different but Boost like that shit. <laughs> minute, you know. do you know I mean but it's like i like as much as I, I like the sound of this it's harder though the long mm. game is hard isn't it mm. and it's like it's very um what's the word i can I can have that mindset where I look at it and I'd be like, it's romantic. Like I've put in all this graph and I've been here, here and here. And I like finally found some people, mm. finally found my tribe. But there's also been times where I'm just like, nobody sees me. And it's just like, of course. do you know what I mean? There's yeah. been times that this isn't working and it's like, this isn't my, uh, my hunger for this isn't even enough. Cause if I was hungry enough, then surely this would be like yeah. bigger than it is after how long it's been mm. and stuff like that. So always mm. flips on its head at the same time like we're human beings everyone wants to be I don't want to say successful but everyone wants to be like peaceful and have a level of freedom and I think that's what I always aspire to is that I can do what I want to do every day and it's like not taxing and sometimes doing it the hard way can be taxing because you have to work so hard you have to take so much rejection you have mm. to take so many like I don't know people promising stuff and not not following mm. through and taking you for a bit of a mug at times too that's like a thing that's happened a lot over the years but like yeah then there are times i wake up and i'm just like how did i turn this thing that i was doing as a kid and i was never thinking of it as being a real thing how am i like going on tour on this and like how am i in front of people and they're singing the lyrics to me and mm. stuff like that so there is that like wow okay it was worth it because someone came up to me and said, yeah, I've heard, I, I heard you in 2013. I've been listening since. And I'm like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm like, why? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. Do you think patience plays a part in that? Like, Massively. because, yeah. But by the sounds of it, your, your glass is clearly half full, you know? Thank you. But I, I feel you. Yeah. I think, it, I think anyone out there listening will, will, can totally, on one hand, you're like, well, I'm doing what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And that's all I ever wanted, and that's if I, you know, heaven forbid, die tomorrow. At least I can say I did it my way. Yeah, exactly. But then there's the other bit of you. It's just like I don't know where I want to go with this, but I want to go as soon as possible. Yeah, I want to get there as soon as possible. So when, <laughs> I, so when I do die, at least I've done everything I need to do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I think it's the human condition at the same time, isn't yeah. it? It's so difficult. Like they always say, you, comparison is the thief of joy, right? It's so difficult say to that see. Again, the... Comparison is the thief of joy. Mm. It's true. Oh, okay, very real thing. Day. It's very, very real. It's Take like it if you if you exist in a bubble, mm. then you can be really happy. Like if you were just all of your baseline needs are met, yeah. like every day, and someone doesn't show you the holiday that they're on, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you'll be fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? You'll jump on Facebook, yeah, <laughs> or something like that. Do you know what I mean someone doesn't show you the new car that they've just bought, yeah. and you're just like, because you're thinking about like how much. Um, I don't know effort you're putting in versus what's coming on the yeah. other end sometimes and you're just like yeah. okay it, you know on some level we're all doing a similar amount do you know what I mean no one is a superhero mm. so it's just like we all have like this, the same kind of like mechanics yeah. so it's just like yeah there are obviously loads of factors as to why I possibly couldn't achieve the same thing that somebody else can achieve with the same amount of energy put into music but it's just like I just don't want to, I can understand that. And then some days it just be like, damn, I wish I hadn't seen that person. Like, I don't know. I'm in a mood of science. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It just makes you, it's very easy to make you think that you're not doing enough, but it's not true. It's just that that's just a real feeling you're going to have. It's like, I'm not a jealous person. I'm more of, I'm always like, spurred on and motivated to like push myself further when I see certain things even sometimes to my own detriment because like I can burn out just Mm. being like I need to have done this by the end of the year and I'm just like and I need to do it all by myself as well sometimes I'm like I won't even ask for help and I'll really like run myself into the ground trying to achieve something just because and I don't know what another person's done to achieve it Mm. but I just know I I want to well the truth is if it looks easy and you're seeing it on a photo yeah chances are it wasn't easy at all exactly when they pull up in the car it's like the condition is in our minds is like success yeah but then you know there's credit cards and there's things like that that you run up bills with and exactly and and that's not to everyone as well some people genuinely are successful but to a point which i know you're alluding to 
there's science behind the reason why certain people get what they get mm -hmm. and are able to achieve what they achieve. Mm -hmm. And we all have the same brain. Yeah. We all have the, the you know, the, the fingers and hands yeah. and thumbs. And why couldn't, in theory, yeah. why couldn't it just be applied and anyone do it? Yeah. I guess there's a level of hierarchy and there's a level of privilege that comes and goes. Yeah. There's things that people go through in their lives and suffer and yeah. and stuff. There's so many variables, isn't so it? So many. It's just like I think even for me personally, it's like in only in the last few years am I recognizing some of the traumas that I've experienced. Mm. And it's just like the the very sick thing about traumas is that you know, okay, I'm going to say one thing and then go back to it, yeah. is I always say ig ignorance is bliss because when you don't realise, like imagine if like I my hand had been severed off yeah. and like I think in the stories that I've heard, when that happens to a person, immediately they don't feel the pain. It's mm. almost like they can't believe that that's actually happened. Yes. Then it dawns on them and then the pain hits. And it's just like that ignorance, that first like 10 seconds of them looking at their hand being missing is just like a they're in a dream in it <laughs> you're just in this moment of like there's no reality yeah this cannot possibly be real so they haven't even like really felt they haven't felt that pain mm. you know because you're looking at any of this because they like, don't know what it's supposed to feel like yeah or anything it, and then it suddenly hits you and then it's like the worst pain you've ever had and i'm just like the problem with trauma is that thing is that like if it goes unrecognized for a long time like you don't realize that like the certain ways that uh, you respond to certain things and like or your habits that are like slowing you down if you've never looked at those things and recognized it then you just go on life and like you just think when you're hitting walls at times yeah. that is that's just how life goes or whatever then something opens your eyes like a moment therapy or something just mm. makes you see you know what the reason that you have that is this you were conditioned in this kind of way this thing happened to you now you look at these characteristics and pa patterns that you have and that's because of this thing that happened to you as a kid. Yeah. Now it's like, all you see is that pain. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, man. It's so crazy. Like, oh, Yo, you've hit some nails. So, metaf <laughs> metaphorically speaking, because <laughs> yeah. I feel like a lot of people, just going back to the, 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 the symptoms of how we feel when we see something that is that makes us feel a certain way that yeah. someone else might have attained or whatnot. Yeah. The reaction to most people, myself included, mm -hmm. is one that is almost like a resort back to a feeling of a time or a thing that you just can't let go of. Yeah. Maybe it was a, a tribal class thing that led you to be sitting at the back of the class at school. Mm -hmm. Hierarchy. Yeah. Could be any, any number of things. And worse. Yeah. But you just go back there, don't you? Yeah. That trauma, even drugs and things like that. Yeah. All the reasons for you taking drugs and all this sort yeah. of stuff. Trauma, man. Trauma's very real. Have it's you ever like... suffered trauma? Like, is there anything that you say to yourself, oh, you know what? Here's a... I mean, this is your own business, by uh -huh. the way. I'm about to like, this isn't a Jerry Springer <laughs> no. moment. But I'm very intrigued as to where, yeah. you, where you got to with this trauma, but where you got to the trauma subject, because... um. I've never even thought about it until you've, you've, um, you've lit, lit the fuse. It's something. It's something that's like I've had a number, a, like a number of very significant traumas in my life. One, I mean, I had a how do I describe it? Quite a turbulent, but like on the face of things, it looked quite steady upbringing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I think a lot of like people experience that actually like everyone's got a crazy family like to some degree so like you will see things as a kid you're not supposed to see and hear things as a kid you're not supposed to hear and like your parents they try their best to like shield you from those things mm. but they're not exactly sure of what you've seen and what you understand of what's happening why they're arguing why you're moving so much and stuff like that mm. so it's just like I think coming up as a kid um I was internalizing a lot of things but like when you're a young person you don't have the language you don't have the vocabulary to even articulate what it is that you're feeling and experiencing so then therefore you can't contextualize it so you can't you can't process it then therefore you can't get through it so it's just like if i can't understand why i'm so like 
shaken by shouting happening in the house yeah. right and things being thrown around mm. then I go to school and I'm really quiet because I was a really quiet kid and like also like in Nigerian culture there's kind of this like don't go out of this house and tell people that we're doing this in the house like don't shame us effectively no, so okay. like you go to school and like pride level yeah the yeah. pride level is so high yeah. so you go to school and like you're convincing everyone that you're having this like really great life and stuff like that everything is fine at home at least I was managing to like keep up the grades but like I was a super when I say I was a super quiet kid a super super shy and like at the same time like I had a good way of putting up a front so like I was a funny kid but like I was never there. Like when I look back at school now, I don't remember most. Of, I don't remember most of it. I don't remember people's names. I'm really bad, and that's something that stayed with me for a really long time. Really? I'm really, yeah. Wow. I'm bad at like I can recognize faces, and faces will always stay there. But like significant and really like important information about people just never sticks. Birthdays and stuff like that because I was never present. Like I couldn't be because imagine you've like you've left school or left mm. home. Sorry. After a massive fight, police have been in the house, all that kind of stuff. And they're like, go to school so you can not see this. And then I'm like in school trying to learn maths and my head is at home thinking yeah, yeah, what's yeah, happening because yeah. I know I'm going back to that. So I'm going for a school day like for years like that. Must, then there was a period of time where I was just not going to school so much anymore. Like I was just, I was just sick. But you know, what I realized I was, I was thinking, why was I such a sickly kid? I was also like uh, a lot bigger. So I was probably about five i think at my heaviest i've been about five stone heavier than i am now right and like that again was a mental thing i was like emotionally eating and like mm. needing to find comfort in food again i can go into the psychology of that because i've been in i've had a therapy session in which i unlocked why i was doing that mm -hmm. and like so i'm this big kid which it's interesting enough because i was never bullied for being big but i think like like anything, you can look at someone and know that that's their shield, you mm. know? So I think maybe people recognize that, like, my size was uh, as a consequence of something. So, like, people were then, like, sensitive to that with me. And, like, then again, I said I was mm. funny as well. So I think, like, I had a charm about me. But that was also just so nobody asked me any serious questions, yeah, 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 you know? Because yeah, yeah, I'm just, yeah. like, I didn't want to address really what was happening inside of my head as mm. a kid. So it's like, oh, I feel like I'm good in my life story. That's cool. It's your podcast, man. We're in. We're in with pocket now, man. You know, I just came back to life and I'm like, whoa. Yo, <laughs> sick. I love it. No, but it's very real. It's like, so then, like, when you, I want to fast forward. If you take that as my foundation, yeah. as like not recognizing, not having the language then as a kid, I wasn't 10 years old being like, I'm traumatized mm -hmm. from what I've seen at home. I've internalized all of that. I've, built up all of these safety mechanisms and these like what do you call it um those things that you, the ways that you you use things to protect yourself i can't think of what the it's, it's, it's level of scapegoat it's like you, just keep going you um there's another term it's um, gone out of my head I right used now it as a uh a, 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 a camouflage a, yeah it's like that it is literally like that and like so that's just become me now because that's what happens as a kid it's just like if no one spots it in you mm. and says hey that kid needs to be talked to and needs help then it's just it just goes into your adult mm. life and like you just think it's normal because yeah. i wouldn't have known that like that was not a healthy way to deal with anything so i took the comfort eating the like hiding everything everything i'm feeling and 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 living through never sharing that with anyone not even my parents as well but i also just didn't want to be a burden to them because they were just going through so much so it's just like i'm just this kid who if i can just get my grades get through all of this, fine. Let's just see mm. what life is going to be like. But at the same time, it's like, it's a weird thing, which I'm not trying to overcome now. I never had a vision for the future. Mm. It's just that as much as I wanted to do something, that's why I'm so thankful I found music because mm. it was like, hit my teen years yeah. and I'm like, ah, oh, this is this thing that makes me have a reason to like, want to be here the next day mm. do you know what i mean like even if but obviously I'm, i got really stuck into that because once i figured out a reason to just want to wake up then i'm just like my head is in music yeah, well, yeah, I wanna, yeah. now i'm obsessed with it sort of thing but it's like like i said about when that trauma comes up later on in life because like i figured all of this is just a coping mechanism mm. you know even music like even the writing it's just like that's the first time that like I can say these things to someone because I've built up this like mm. way of never really communicating how I'm feeling to people. I'm really not confident at all in myself. And I'm like, on, in music though, I can be. So I'm just... Personification. Yeah. 
literally of everything that I want to say in a in a song. Like a Sasha Fierce effect. Yeah, kind of like having an alter ego. Which is some of the best artists, and not just music, graph, fashion. Yeah. You know. I think the troubled artists, they they often, they unsung, they unsing themselves. <laughs> That's such a good way of putting it. <laughs> it's so true. That's they, so true. You know, the flowers don't drop in the right laps often because yeah. we're so, we're so, because people can be so, um, I'll just move on, just go on. That's not, that's not the real me anyway. I'm yeah. doing this and I'm filling a well that isn't necessarily to do with you mm -hmm. and what, what these flowers represent. Yeah. I don't want that award because it goes against my principles. I'm having a bad enough time as it is. You yeah. know what I mean? Just, I think there is a, a level of trouble that I think we all just, that's a kind of charm, isn't it? Yeah. If you can live with it, mm. I think it's a, it makes for really like human experience happening in music. Mm. Um, I think I'm fortunate to understand enough and quite a lot about the way that I think. And, and then therefore I can look at other people and like empathize mm -hmm. as well. Because I think there's, a, there's also a lot of people who have this brokenness to them, yeah. can't understand the source of it, never. Which is like that ignorance where it's just like... Um, you had a guest on Jazz. What's her last? Oh, Jazz Kahina. Kahina, yeah. who said, "Big up Jazz." Big up Jazz, who said that she wasn't recognizing the t turmoil that was happening in her side, her yeah, the, yeah. the anger, yeah. and like was expressing it. And when she was younger, thought it was fun. Mm -hmm. You know that like binge drinking and mm -hmm. like going out being crazy and things like that. And I'm just like, but that's also how it, that's how it plays out in people who don't recognize it. Mm -hmm. There is like a for me, it's. There were times where I was having self-destructive behaviors mm. and thinking of it as like fun and not recognize it as recognizing it as escapism. Mm. And then now there's the other end where it's just like, I want to look back at all of those things. I'm so mad and I'm just like, why was I doing that? Why, why was I was... thinking this through? Before? Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of people, uh, the, the, the average Joe member of public, the people that, and I, you know, listen, big up everybody, but I do feel like the burden on the shoulders of a creative person. Sometimes, I think I may have mentioned this with Jazz, I'm not sure. We kind of think six months ahead, us artists. Yeah. And um, we over prescribe on, you know, looking in the mirror yeah. and self analysis. That's so true. Doing videos and then having to edit them <laughs> later on, Kels. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. But it's the truth, isn't it? Like, people that, that like you say are in a, their own bubble and are quite content with what they they don't they don't forecast within the, the, themselves in the same way and yeah they, they may be drinking way too much and then their mate will turn around and go like dude you're right yeah i'm fine i'm just drinking leave it yeah and that, that's just their mentality some people just never leave that never yeah. leaves them yeah it? it's as long as it is like survivable mm. then like you can hope that that person is okay and leave them but like a lot of the time if it's a form of escapism like drinking and mm. doing whatever drugs it just doesn't have a good end and that's the thing that worries me with artists because of this mm. thing of like you're, we're just constantly looking at ourselves and having to like figure out how to project ourselves into the world as this like image to be consumed mm. which isn't very human it's not a really natural yeah. thing to do it's just very Sid and Nancy isn't it we always celebrate these people that have you know died in a blaze of their own self yeah, yeah. Of glory right and then that's when they sell the most so it's just like yeah we also just reinforce it as a society and like music industry reinforces it because yeah. they know that actually don't change that person's course because it's going to be historic mm. no matter how tragic it is mm. like i heard very recently there was an you know i don't i don't know any names i wouldn't say any names but like they're spending people's advances on like their binges of like if it's Xanax or Coke yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. and it's just like but then on the extreme end of that there are a number of artists that have over overdosed recently mm. there's loads of mm. them actually and it's like oh you know that they're the company around them are just fueling them because uh, there is something that really interesting about watching someone's demise as well mm -hmm. we're quite a um voyeuristic society yeah. but we're like sick just as long as we're a little bit of a distance away yeah. from it so like we will watch someone like yeah, yeah. self-terminate don't want to sit with the lion yeah <laughs> do you know what I mean but we will do you know what I mean we'll watch someone eat themselves we'll watch the worst <laughs> thing happen to somebody because it's like we just need that like again it's a dopamine release yeah, yeah, we need yeah. that next like shocking thing to see so it's just like oh man yeah, yeah it's so true and with 
industry being the way it is, and the the, the, the drug pharmaceuticals, the the, the alcohol, the, the the new you know interest in legalizing weed and cannabis, albeit for for medicine medicinal purposes, is probably good. But yeah. But uh, point being is like. We are so fine tuned. The industry is so fine tuned. Like they've seen it on record. What happens? Amy Winehouse. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, if she was Miller. alive right now. Yeah. She they, she'd be our own superhero, and we'd yeah. love her even more. But they took it to the too far. Yeah. So the next time they're going to figure it out. So like, right, we don't take it too far because it'll turn into a bit of an Amy Winehouse. Exactly. Thing, or a Mac Miller. Exactly. You know? So. It's constant refinement on their part, right? Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. dark, isn't it? It is. It's just like it's. There is a um, lifespan to an artist and it's just like, which a company recognises as a person, as a product, not actually someone who should live their life out to like the 80 to 100, have kids, grandkids and all those sorts of things. It's just like, how entertaining can this person be whilst their music is still relevant, mm. whilst they're still like the hot thing and it's just like well how much drama can we insert because we see it with like the kardashians and kanye's and stuff like that like as much as kanye is still giving music most of what we've experienced of him for the last two years has been his mental health his breakdowns his like outbursts and like his divorce and all of these sorts of things that are like headline worthy and it's just like this is a person who's actually just going through a mental health crisis Mm. and we're watching that happen in real time but because he's a millionaire or whatever it is it's like we won't think immediately that this is someone who might be in danger. It's just so entertaining to watch. Yeah. So they find really creative ways to do it because we don't worry so much about Kanye because he has so much money. But we're just like, Mac Miller also had enough money to like not yeah. need to OD. He probably didn't, I don't know the story isn't it, but he probably didn't mean to take so many drugs, so much drugs that he would die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, same with Amy Winehouse. I know like she sounds, I didn't watch the documentary, so I'm not so sure about the details about her death, but like ultimately when you're using and abusing drugs that much there isn't a there's not a level of care of for yourself anymore no, anyway no, no, so no, like no, no, even yeah. if you accidentally kill yourself like you were always in a realm of being able to kill yourself yeah, anyways yeah. so it's just like walking the edge yeah you're always walking the edge like if you there's not you just know it like ODing and like and and being that far out of yourself and being that poison and intoxicated like only really comes from a no longer wanting to actually just exist in your own form anyway. Mm. Like, you don't want to be sober. So it's like, even if you didn't want to kill yourself, you didn't want to be alive, though. That's trauma. Yeah, trauma. It's to, all to, attached. To tap into the trauma. Okay, not that there's a real devil's advocate to this because it's yeah. absolutely true yeah. and should be explored immediately. Get into it, figure it out. But um, again, does that take away the dynamics of variety in the music world. Like, I just put it out there. It could be that some of the most troubled people, mm-hmm. like sibling rivalry, mm-hmm. <laughs> we all know them. Yeah. They make for the best rep- recipe in, in music and it all becomes neutral, doesn't it? Yeah. You know what it is? I don't think anything should come at the cost of a human life, though. 100%. So I think... And I, I also think... And some people might agree or not agree. But I think a br- there's a level of brilliance that like, or any level of brilliance to some degree can be taught. So actually, like you can heal somebody and still be training them at the same time. You can you can say, okay, yeah. you're the sickest rapper that's in East London right now. You might also be selling these drugs and that's also like a really cool thing. But we can take you off the streets and put you in with... Jay Z, yeah. with this writer, with these the best producers, we're gonna take you out of that environment, put some cotton around you, so that like you not because when you take people out of that, like you know, we all have an addiction to something, and sometimes mm-hmm. people's addictions are to their pain and to their story yeah. and to yeah. like their to their trauma, like the, what they know, right? If you take someone out of there, then they have withdrawal symptoms. They don't know who they are yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the time, if you just went cold turkey off of a drug and stuff, you're going to like not know how to exist without mm-hmm. being on that high, right? So it's the same in terms of your environment. If you take that person out of that and you just apply care and mm-hmm. love and you say, look, you don't need to go back to that place. We're going to support you in any kind of way, but we're also going to, teach and train you we're gonna 
bathe and massage and like listen to you it's totally upgrade therapize yeah. you and all of those things all the things that the music industry can do by the way but don't choose to choose not to yes yeah. Like it should, they should write in your contracts. Okay, yeah, we signed you, and we recognize that you're a big drug yeah. p- gang lord, yeah. pin, uh, kingpin of yeah. this game. But like, we can actually heal you. Yeah. You know, like you can let all of that go because I had as a company, we have a million pounds that you. I've did. said this. <laughs> I, there's a even coming off tour as a level of PTSD. Yeah, you're really coming off of something, and you've got to sit down with yourself so after right, the man. rider, and after then, all the shows, <laughs> after yeah. the backstage party. Yeah, after looking after your voice and trying not to get cold. Yeah. you're sitting there thinking, "If I can get cold now, oh, yeah, where's my drink gone?" <laughs> right, you know, exactly. It's all of that. They have got the money. They have got the budget, and yeah. we don't want another Jade Goody, or we don't want. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That didn't read the fine print. Yeah. Or wasn't even given a fine print. Yeah. Are you going to be on a big TV show? Okay, well, you expect this, expect this, but don't worry, we've got you covered. Yeah. They don't even do that with the majority of soldiers in the army. Yeah? Exactly. It's, no, especially not. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not, we're not there as a society yet to say that, like, actually ensuring that people aren't at their the point of demise yeah. like once they've left whatever thing they've been in yeah. with you like we're not writing that into contracts yet like we yeah. should I, I think that will be 100%. the next generation thing is that yeah. like when you join us as a company us, us as whatever yeah. we don't just use you as like a worker bee yeah. until you've run out of steam we actually like keep you alive and like mm. show you how to stay alive during this but you're still going to work hard for us but mm. we'll just make sure you don't like n- die after this <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> that sort of thing yeah. yeah protection yeah. uh there is something positive about the in- industry right now mm-hmm. where the likes of yourself the likes of this right here and the things that uh to us it's almost like a given now it's like mm-hmm. well of course we've got all these great things and they are on a the back foot they are they've mm. got to play catch up and mm. they do it really well yeah they got money yeah but with restriction comes this creativity and you've True. got these opportunities to do really crazy cool stuff and okay. and i think for a lot of people that are listening right now we you know the, the pitfalls of of, of this of, of you know i don't think they're going to go any way anytime soon but technology constantly pushes us to do and achieve different amazing things and, yeah um there's a lot to look forward to with that isn't there I love it. Like, I think, as we were saying earlier, there's a beauty in, like, having had to do things the hard way, but knowing that, like, in a year from now, it's probably all going to be done in a few buttons and, like, probably teleport myself (laughs) into... We just get there. Exactly. (laughs) At least have a hologram of myself and stuff like that to think that, actually, we're entering that kind of terrain. We are in VR now and stuff like that. People are putting on goggles and they're suddenly performing in front of a million people and you can be anywhere that you want in the world. I think technology is phenomenal for that Mm. because access to it also is just, like, before, 10 years ago, those things were there, but, like, you had to be a millionaire to try the first one on and then since it stayed in like a, mm-hmm. a cabinet somewhere in like some museum but now it's just like yeah you can order it on Amazon and, yes. <laughs> and you've got it now as long as you pay 200 quid for it so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's like it's literally just there in our, at our fingertips and because we're there now we're like there's something new every single day mm. it's just like that's gonna have a really amazing impact on audio because I mean I was listening to I can't even think of an example. There's loads. Because my thing right now is the mixing. I'm obsessed with mixing and mastering because I'm just like, I realise my like lack of like attention to detail with mixing and mastering. So I've been like practising so oh, much. And that's that's, cool. that's been my last like few months. It's just like, now I want to know how to mix properly. So you're already hearing my voice thinking, right, I need to EQ that. <laughs> no, actually, your podcast sounds good. You know, it sounds very, very good. Christ for that. <laughs> my ears aren't going. My, my, my intern keeps on saying, I switch on these lights and there's a high pitched squeak. She says she's like super younger than me. And I'm like, what do you mean there isn't? Yes, there is. No, there isn't. We have this. Can you hear it? I can now that you say it. God damn it. Why to, can't I hear it? I have to tune in. I can hear it, but it feels like it's it's that kind of high. It feels like it's a massage to my ears, not a sound. I can't hear that at all. Yeah, it is there, but it's very, very, very faint. Like, yeah, you have to have very young ears to hear it. Yeah, right. So we're going to edit this bit. (laughs) (laughs) Young kids, you. Damn it. Yeah, no, I can't hear it. But so, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. (laughs) But like, yeah, because now I'm thinking about like the... um, the kind of fine tuning you can do mm. with like very little because of the quality of equipment that we have now as well like with apple products and stuff like that mm. like everything is producing such a high quality of 
file of mm. thing like whatever it is microphones that like we used to be ten thousand pounds before and you couldn't have access to now there's like a replica of it that is 400 pounds yeah, exactly. and it's just like it's capturing everything that like you want to mm. in your recordings and things like that it's just like the good thing about technology advancing is that our like quality and the speed of our Im- impulsiveness. output exactly yeah. impulsiveness is like Oof. you can literally create yeah. something brilliantly very 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 quickly and like and yeah, to a really, really high degree on limited resources, which those resources are getting smaller and smaller, or at least access to everything is mm-hmm. becoming a lot more easy. So it's like, yeah, I think about like, yeah, when I go back now, I'm comparing mixing or uh, mixing and mastering of like a song that was a big hit in the 90s. And I'm like, there's no bottom end whatsoever. And I'm just like, this sounds tinny. It sounds like all crushed and like so noisy, but this was the number one hit at that point compared to some kid in Chicago who's done this mix in his bedroom. And like, it is insane. It's wild. It's it's like, it's loud. It's wide. It's like, it has space. It has dynamic in it. And I'm just like, that is, then where are we going to be in 10 years with music? What is it going to sound like? They're moving into this, um, what is it called? Where They've got these new headphones and you can subscribe on Apple to listen to, I can't think of what it's called. Swindle's actually done a listening party using this kind of form of sound. But like, we're moving to this point where we're listening to music now in 4K and like, and in 4D as well. Mad. So I'm just like, that's where we're going to be that you can buy. Like, I have these headphones called the Neurophone headphones that like have an outer sub... um, cup and then they have an in-ear so it's like two i don't have them on me at the moment but they also then do like a hearing test on you for like 10 minutes in the beginning when you first yeah, get yeah. it i i i tried Did doing that yeah. yeah i tried I, wanted, I just wanted to know what my ears were like on yeah. the test but i was on the plane doing it and my ears were pop off yeah so course. i never got like the truest like yeah, of course yeah. but then it's just like that's why i'm like they have ideas like that now mm. which maybe aren't even being executed to their highest level because they're just new so mm. i mean like to it's like 10 years time we'll probably be somewhere else i think because yeah, yeah. we're moving at such a, like an exponential yeah. rate Mad. next year what are we going to have in terms of sound even just in our homes it's going to be like insane insane you know so i'm excited for that yeah me too vr crazy shit right they be, uh, be affordable yeah affordable <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah exactly everything will diminish in price and value and yeah just, yeah um there's this company that i'll th- you know as a side note but there's this company that um, I've heard of that when your pet dies, mm. they create a VR, a, a virtual reality version. Oh my God. Cute it's kind of scary though. <laughs> yeah. Something yeah. like, there's going to be VR. Keeping device. people alive. Yeah. Keeping the, the, people alive. Have you seen that So get movie? your content going. Get your, exactly. Get, so make the content can, like, so you do go. Take pictures, <laughs> yeah. 3D scans. Make keep, some music in VR oh world. My God. And then when you go, you've got another 20 years on you, oh, right? Oh, exactly. What's that film? Oh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like the guy, he's a he's a genius and he downloads his consciousness into the computer and then he realizes he can put his DNA into other people. So then he actually makes himself but then he creates, he starts healing people using this technology oh, as well. Sure. No, but no. it all turns out super Comment evil. below. Comment below. You yeah, tell it's us. Like a po- it, I don't know if it was that popular. It's quite a popular film, at least in like the uh, late, early 2000s, I Sounds think. It's like a cult film. It, I don't You know, I, if I could tell you what it's it was. Business. It is kind of like that. But it is literally like, it's similar to this idea of like, you have so much information about you obviously in the movie they literally just plugged in his brain and downloaded his memories or something like that but like at, there will come a point that we put so much of our information yeah. somewhere yeah. like our phone can kind of like mimic us in a way that like if you we can make um virtual reality holograms mm. of ourselves now that's something that can happen is and yeah. it's actually an app what is it called I can't remember what it's called right now, but like you, now you can beam yourself, at least using someone's phone, they can look on the screen, it can appear that you're in the room with them looking through their camera. Crazy. Yeah, <gasps> you can do that. It's app oh, that. I know what it is because they, the, they did the murder. Um, oh, who was it that did the, the app? Ah, ah, ah. Oh, shit. And it's an app where you go through, your phone becomes that person's phone who died, and you've got to figure out what I their, haven't seen that, no, though. I forget the name. I came on a podcast. I can't remember. My yeah. back going to kill me. Were you going to f- put it in the comments? Yeah. Comments below, baby. <laughs> comments below. Yeah, this is a true sign of, a, of an avid fan of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Um, yeah, it's yeah. the future, We are it? there where it's like, okay, you just need to... You 
now someone can like capture my voice we've got deep fakes now so yeah, you can take scary. a picture right and make the person be saying whatever mm-hmm. you want with the voice because mm-hmm. now you just take a recording of the person's voice you can make them say anything so there will be a point where it's just like nobody ever dies because like i'll just look at the vr version of my like mm-hmm. dead friend which is really creepy to think about mm-hmm. but it would be they'll find a way to Come, incorporate that. that yeah thing. it's like i feel like there's a level of like ethics to it that we should like consider and why we wouldn't do it but as a society we've been pushing the boat so far away from like humanity for so long that yeah we're just someone will die but we won't miss them because like we can keep them in our lives yeah we do that as well yeah that's just yeah because you do become so sanitized right music and words are the only thing that's in my opinion yeah because words are words are the truth and singing is the message I like that. Music is the message. It's anything that's really left for emotional connectivity, isn't it? Oh man, I. If you don't do music, I guess you might have it. You might disagree, but I think there is something that is innately like, or even like on a spiritual level. I think music has a. It has an essence to it mm. that like is unlike anything else. But there are other. Th- art forms i think that like people show that there is something quite like godly in what they're doing mm-hmm. i think music has that i think the words as well the like ability to put down what it is that like you want to say and what you want to have said mm-hmm. whilst you're here is amazing mm-hmm. i think yeah it, there's different art forms in which people are capturing something brilliant like that but music because it's with words it's the one that we can really understand mm-hmm. do you know what i mean like i can look at a painting and interpret it in so many different ways. That person might have been telling you, look, I'm going insane and I'm tr- I'm trying to capture my soul mm. before I disappear. Mm. I'm trying to put it onto the canvas. And someone s- stood next to me might understand that. I'm looking at this painting like I don't get it. <laughs> do you know <laughs> what I mean? That's the problem I with kind of art, do. right? I feel you, yeah, but yeah. with music, like I can be Bob Marley and say the most profound mm. thing and then it resonates with people forever. Yeah. I'm dead now and people oh. are still saying that. You know, that's why words and music is very powerful. Insanely powerful. Yeah. And that's why, yeah, that's why you do what you do, ain't it? Yeah. I'm thank. I'm so grateful that, like, music found me yeah. at a time where I was just like, I needed something. It was, I was, I think I'm a person who can do anything that I become obsessed with. So, like, I like cooking. And, like, if I'm not, if I'm not in a music uh, spiral, then I would literally just go down like, I want to learn how to cook this, 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 and this. Yeah, and I'm like, I love cooking for people as well, so I recognise that that is also, it's got to be a a consequence of something, because like, I really, cooking is like my way of like, showing love. Mm. So it's just like, and I really, if, when I love you, I really want to cook for you, I really want to see you enjoy the food as well. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's so sick. (laughs) It's the same sort of, uh, it's the same sort of process in making music as cooking is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's all mm-hmm. the it's ingredients, it's the process. It's There's the, a science to it. There's yeah. a way to get it wrong. There's a way to get yeah, it yeah. right, you know. But then it's always can be different every single time. The same dish. Mm. You can do certain things. You're like, today, I want it to be less salty than yesterday. Yesterday, I was in a really salty mood. <laughs> <laughs> to me, today, I'm just like, oh, okay, I actually need there to be more greens in this because I want to be able to like feel energized after yeah. I eat this meal. So I'm going to adapt it a little bit. Or I know my friend really likes cauliflower. So I'm mm. going to add cauliflower just to make them happy and be like, I made mm. your favorite thing today. Do you know what I mean? It's just things like that. You can adapt it. It has purpose and you can do it intentionally. But it's also just food is delicious. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's also just nice. The music's like that as well and if yeah. we really train the, the our processes to think in the same way as we do about the turnaround of food and how we cook it and prepare it and daily it arrives if we are able to do that with our musical content then that should be a, again it may feel neutral yeah. but it, it it's forgiving and it allows That's you so to true. just keep doing it i think people are doing that i'd like to think that people go into music into a studio into the booth or like wherever they are making music and they're thinking i want to create something that like lifts somebody's mood Mm. and they really think about the science of what it takes to do that and sometimes i hear music even if it's just like a parody song or something like that i'm like you made this because you wanted me to laugh and i appreciate that because i can hear some songs and like i want to cry immediately and i'm just like you put so much pain into that Mm. and it's just like you wanted to Mm. relate you wanted to know that like you wanted to tell people you're not the only one going through that and like that's a powerful thing too but i really love that like someone had the like 
maybe they even do it purposefully but they were just like we just want to make fun music and we just want to make it that when people hear this they want to do this with their family and dance with their grandma to do that too, it, it is madness yeah. i often think to myself how <laughs> yeah, the hell that is... sound in it you know what i mean <laughs> the, the things true. that look like they take the least thought probably took the most thinking yeah. they weren't driven on anything else except making you happy yeah how exactly because cool it's that same thing that you're saying about like what keeps people listening for more than eight seconds and it's just like that is there a science to it i think to a degree there has to be like there's mm. someone obviously like people that are constantly putting out hit records have figured out like there is some kind of like way that people listen to music so you can keep them engaged but it's just like engaged enough engaged being the first thing mm. and then like elated being the next like you can actually yeah. take that person and make them feel whatever it is that you want them to feel in that music and they haven't switched off because music has this way too that like if i'm in a bad mood most people when you're in a bad mood you want to gravitate towards that kind of sad somber music mm -hmm. but like if the song is good enough like you won't be able to resist it it comes on shuffle and it's a happy dancing song you're like i'm not gonna skip it no matter how i'm feeling oh okay i might yeah. just keep this one on <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, i mean yeah, 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 yeah. and it's just it's like you're there like you were just crying 10 seconds ago and yeah. you listening night fever night yeah, yeah, fever totally. there's tears coming, <laughs> yeah. you know I mean? coming down your eyes and you're like i feel you <laughs> it's me at the gym the pain the pleasure the pain yeah. The pain. yeah i feel you it just has this like grip on you because it was it was genius mm -hmm. yeah what's the future what's the future yeah. for the world or for me or for you for me hmm ah i mean like a that's a good question because mm. i don't know if i know uh, i think it changes all of the time i have dreams and aspirations like things i want to achieve I think I just want to travel a lot and make music in different places because mm. when I leave, especially when I leave London, it doesn't even have to be far, but when I leave London, like my outlook on music changes a little bit because, course, yeah. yeah, I think when not only do you just get these happen to somebody else's culture, even, even if it's just up north, like things just sound different because yeah. the community is different. The culture there is a little bit different. Right. So I'm just like, all of a sudden I can go into someone else's studio and like they're playing me a lot of folk music or something like that. Then suddenly I'm just like, why have I been doing music? Because the reason that that person's doing music is so different. Because a lot of the songs I'm making when I'm just at home are love songs. They're quite romantic. They're quite R&B. Because that's me when I'm by myself. I just lean into like uh, that kind of warm, sexy feeling. Mm -hmm. But then I go into someone else's studio and they're talking about their ancestors. Oh, <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? And like they're hitting certain drums and instruments. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa. And they're like, yeah, we play this in my culture because this summons this sort of like a god or something yeah, yeah. and i'm like whoa my music is not that deep <laughs> do you know what i mean, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> then all of a sudden i'm just like i need to i want to read i want to yeah, like yeah. go and talk to my mom and be like why did you choose to come why did you choose to come to london why like to then end up down a uh, rabbit hole talking to her and having conversations with my auntie and she's telling me things i never knew about my grandma my That's granddad wow, 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 wow. and like we did that not this christmas the last christmas where she was like no two christmases after before where she was telling me things about my grandparents and I'd never heard these stories. And then all of a sudden I was just like, I just learned a different layer to myself That's because, so do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you don't know anything, if you really don't know, and it's, it's difficult having parents that have like immigrated to somewhere else, like you do become a little bit detached from your history and like your lineage so it's just like there are stories and also that's the time where they didn't have technology so i can't just watch videos back of my grandparents and just don't know it's just not there there's no recordings not even any wow. like a diary i could read or something like that it literally can i can only know who my family are if someone tells me and it's just like that's hard my mom tells me some stories but my auntie is just a storyteller yeah. so like she just starts telling me stories and i'm just like i need to know more about my lineage and my history and my family because all of a sudden i've just recognized why i'm a certain way and i've recognized why my mom is a certain way that's why i'm a certain way so now there's just more, there just can only be more depth to my music because i'm like i can't just keep talking about love anymore mm. like i wrote the song it's out with um oh my god why would i forget his name i'm thinking too much it's called uh still hungry why is it gone out of my head ah I hope he doesn't see this. <laughs> but either way, this is like a few years ago. It's, it will come to me in a second. I'm just under too much pressure. That's all it is. And literally, it's it's a song literally just talking about like my emotional eating, but it's such in such a simple way. I'm literally just like talking about like you know, I can't seem to put my like 
self self restraint ahead of how tasty this food this food is mm -hmm. and like it doesn't even sound I feel like if you read the lyrics, it reads exactly like what the story is. But like because of the music and like how I'm singing and it's quite stylized, it's like you wouldn't think this is just a song about someone who can't control their eating. Uh, you, yeah, yeah. And it's as simple as that. It might sound like it's the way it's written. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think people might interpret it as like a. I can't, I can't imagine maybe like a, I wouldn't think a relationship at all, but maybe my relationship with something else that wasn't food because it might sound metaphorical, but it is, it is literally, I'm talking about like, okay, I have to stop binge eating now because I know when I am, it's just a sign of like where my mental health is and I'm trying to comfort myself in some kind of way. But it's like on the surface level, the wave to me, the stage I need to be at before I really do deal with whatever it is that is triggering this like episode right now just stop eating it but i'm like oh but it tastes so good <laughs> do you know what i mean so i'm like <laughs> but that's what i'm doing with music now it's just wow. like, that's what i'm trying to do right now is just think who am i like i can do the love songs just a past time like a lot of the music i put out very recently was just because i had to i had to put something out yeah, yeah whereas right now i'm just like no i'm gonna go into a place this is why this is a really long way of answering what's the future by the go way on, it's because i'm I just like it. i'm not in any i'm not in any rush i'm like the songs that like will be the future for me they might not be out anytime soon because like i'm still trying to like therapize myself and, and figure out some things wow. talk to my talk to my family and be like why like and be like why to some mm. people yeah. do you know what i mean i'd be like why and like and then learn and understand and process all of those things that like been through seen didn't understand at the time but now i do understand and then interpret that and put that into music even if i then put it in a way that's like so simple like that still mm -hmm. hungry song where i'm just saying the real surface level of the problem um i do have another song with alpha mist that i wrote in 2012 2013 around that time called easily i forget and again it sounds like it could be a romantic song but actually i'm talking about it's like um i say I hope you go to those memories when you feel like there's nothing left. I need you to remember me because easily I forget. So I'm saying easily I forget myself when I'm angry. Like I need you to remember the version of me that exists when I'm not like seeing red. Because I think also like a very real thing about myself is because I've had this like forever, this habit of like just internalizing all of my feelings. If that's anger, I'll rage, it whatever, mm -hmm. it's just like... The problem is it sits in there for so long that when I get angry, it comes out like psh, like fire. Mm -hmm. That I don't even recognize myself in those moments mm -hmm. when I'm really, really angry. And I think most people see me and they perceive me as just quite a calm person because it takes a lot to like have that come out because I've done a lot of work in my life, not purposefully. Like I've done a lot of like work in terms of like figuring out how to bottle all of that up. Mm -hmm. That like I'm not easily triggered. But when I am, it's like the, the what do you call it? The top cop song. And it's a huge explosion. So I literally wrote a song about that because I had like a really massive explosive argument with my mom. And I was just like, I'm going to kill her. I wasn't, I didn't think I would. But like, I was like, if I hadn't stopped, like, I was so angry that I was just like, this isn't me. That mm. is like all of the anger from all of my life coming out in this argument. Straw to break the back. Yeah. So I was just like, okay, so I wrote this song. That's just like, I'm asking you to know that don't make that moment the only memory you have of me think about all of the years and all of the versions of me that you've seen i'm not my mistakes do you know what i mean wow. that's what that song is about and it's super short like you wouldn't listen you'd listen to it and think oh this is a nice tune <laughs> <sighs> the progress yeah. of a constant artist man i mean it's <laughs> fucking great yeah and Thanks. if your future's got anything to go by self-exploration yeah will only add value to your currency as you oh, grow up in music i really hope so i think like i'm intrigued to see what it means for like how people listen to the music i also care about the music being listenable that's always really important to me mm. but i think like it's I, sometimes i'm like oh do i want to just make songs that are going to do well just because there are like charts and things to compete with or am i going to go away and make folk music and make me <laughs> do you know what i mean mm -hmm. am i going to make music that is going to because we don't see folk music in the charts and we don't see it at forefront. But, like, I feel drawn to making music that, like, wow. is doing that. Just because I feel like 
Yeah, I have yeah. to explore something different. That's so sick. So like, I'm in this place. So I'm like, I might still make sexy R and B music. I thought, oh yeah, I'm going to because mm. that's like I go to that place naturally. But I'm like, you might also hear me on some rock. You might also hear me on some like emo stuff because I need to like. The only way I'm going to be able to tell this story of this pain or this ache yeah. or this love or this whatever is through this medium. So we'll yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The emotional medium that it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but <laughs> I swear to God. I feel like I've learned so much about you in this in this moment. That's and good. I'm it, glad to hear that. Honestly, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yo, this is food for thought, for real, for real. <laughs> I feel like I did talk a lot. I apologise for like... <clears throat> this is good. We caught her the right zeitgeist <laughs> moment, right? Amazing. Honestly, thank you. proper value. I really appreciate you talking to you as well. Amazing. I felt really safe in this space, you know. Maybe it's because I've been watching, so I felt like, I, like I've like i already been <laughs> with you. Do you know oh what I mean? God. It's a very real thing, isn't it? I feel like I've already been with you this whole time, so yeah, I'm like, man. oh, I didn't even have Come to break the ice yeah. to start yeah. telling you about my life story and That's my troubles. That's how we roll out here, man. <laughs> Come on. Thank you so much, Ever V, inside thank you the for place. Me. Wow. Go check out that music, eh? Okay? We've had enough of the talking, you know? <laughs> the dog, see the rabbit, go get the music. Thank you so much for passing through. Thank you. Killer Killer Podcast, live and direct, iPhone 13. And hey, good luck to that. Kills, hold tight, everybody. Don't forget, sharing is caring. Tell a friend, tell a friend. We ain't doing this for our health. So we're doing it for you guys. We are you. You stay lucky. Don't talk to anybody I wouldn't. <laughs> Cheers, Emma. <laughs> 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 <laughs>